Good morning and welcome to Christchurch Cathedral, Newcastle, in which this service of morning prayer for Saturday morning is being recorded. My name is Catherine Bowyer and I'm the Dean of Newcastle and I acknowledge that this cathedral church stands on Awabakal land. The Awabakal people have cared for this land, this water, this sky, this earth, these people for countless generations and I pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging and pray that I with the cathedral community may join with them in a spirit of reconciliation in good stewardship of all that God has entrusted to us in the good gifts of creation. On Thursday night this week in the cathedral, we were one of many live sites for prayer across the Newcastle, Central Coast and Hunter region, praying for the region and praying for the work of the spread of the gospel, the growth of God's kingdom. These candles were prayer candles which were lit at that service. And so as we pray today, I invite you to reflect on the candles, to reflect on the church communities which are part of the places where you live or part of your life, the diversity of those communities and the gifts that you have received from those communities which enrich the spread of the gospel and our witness to God's love made known in Jesus Christ. Today the church gives thanks for the witness of Charles I, King and Martyr. Born in 1600, the second son of James, the first of England and sixth of Scotland, Charles became heir apparent when he was 12 years old on the death of his elder brother. He succeeded to the throne in 1625, where he came up against the increasing power of an antagonistic parliament. Combined with the religious puritanism which was prevalent, this made Charles staunch in his resistance to the power of either force in the land. He frequently dismissed sittings of parliament and tried to enforce high church Anglican practice on all throughout both kingdoms of England and Scotland. Opposition resulted in civil war. After Charles's imprisonment and trial, he was, put to this he was put to death on this day in 1649. A faithful member of the Church of England, Catholic and Reformed, he suffered and died for what he believed in. The service for Saturday morning prayer can be found in the prayer book on page 419. Our psalm is Psalm 72 and our reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. In the name of God, creator, redeemer and sanctifier. Amen. God has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now, and forever. Amen. Our opening canticle, A Song of Creation. Bless the Lord, all created things, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Bless the Lord, all people of the earth, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is worthy to be praised and exalted forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 72, which is found on page 294, of the prayer book. Give the king your judgment, O God, and your righteousness to the son of a king, that he may judge your people rightly and the poor of the land with equity. 
Let the, main, let the mountains be laden with peace because of his righteousness, and the hills also with prosperity for his people. May he give justice to the poor among the people, and rescue the children of the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and while the moon gives light throughout all generations. May he come down like rain upon the new mown fields and as showers that water the earth. In his time shall righteousness flourish and abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. His dominion shall stretch from sea to sea, from the great river to the ends of the earth. His adversaries shall bow down before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the Isles shall bring tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. All kings shall fall down before him, and all nations do him service. He will deliver the needy when they cry, and the poor that have no helper. He will pity the helpless and the needy and save the lives of the poor. He will redeem them from oppression and violence and their blood shall be precious in his sight. Long may he live and be given of the gold of Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually. May they bless him every day. Let there be abundance of wheat in the land. Let it flourish on the tops of the mountains. Let its ears grow fat like the grain of Lebanon, and its sheaves thicken like the grass of the field. Let his name live forever, and endure as long as the sun. Let all peoples use his name in blessing, and all nations call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does great wonders. Blessed be his glorious name forever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen. Amen. Creator God, whose praise and power are proclaimed by the whole creation, receive our morning prayers, we pray, and renew us in your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, beginning at verse 67. Then his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favourably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty saviour for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we, should, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. May your word live in us, and bear much fruit to your glory. The Canticle, A Song of Redemption, on page 420. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. 
All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. For it pleased God that in him all fullness should dwell and through him all things be reconciled to himself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. King of kings and Lord of lords, whose faithful servant Charles prayed for those who persecuted him and died in the living hope of your eternal kingdom, grant us by your grace so to follow his example that we may love and bless our enemies through the intercession of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of mercy, we pray this day for your world, for places where people live under oppression, fear and violence. We pray for your world in which at this time so many places are overwhelmed, overwhelmed by illness through COVID-19, overwhelmed through a feeling of despair and helplessness, overwhelmed through awareness of unrest and tension within their communities. We pray your peace and mercy, your wisdom for those who are called to leadership. We pray for our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, for Gladys Berejiklian, our Premier in New South Wales. We pray for New Italian Elms, the Lord Mayor of this city, for Tim Crackenthorpe and Sharon Claydon, called to represent us at state and federal level, and for all who are called to serve your people in and through the communities in which they live and serve. Be their wisdom and their guide, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for your church throughout the world, we pray particularly for places where your church is persecuted, where people are not free to gather. We pray for places at this time where people are not free to gather because of illness. We pray for those who feel torn apart, for those who feel separated from your love, that they may know that nowhere and no one is distant from you. We pray for Peter, Bishop of Newcastle. We pray for Sonia and Charlie, his assistant bishops. We pray for Arthur and Rod, our archdeacons. As we gaze upon these flickering lights, we give thanks for your spirit at work through the diversity of your body, the church. And we pray that we too may be a light to the world, living icons of your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for our communities and all in need this day. We pray for the First Nations people of this land. We give thanks for growing awareness and awakening of injustice. We pray for the First Nations people of this diocese, the Awabakal, Biripai, Darkanyung, Garigal, Gaywegal, Gamilaroi, Wanarua and Waramai peoples. We pray for 
all who are ill, those with COVID-19, those whom we hold in our hearts and those whose needs this day, Lord, will be known only to you. Be their healing, their comfort, their peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we give you thanks for all your holy people of every time and place who have faithfully proclaimed your gospel. We remember with thanksgiving this day the witness of your servant, Charles, King and Martyr. And we remember before you with thanksgiving those who have been witness to you in our lives and through whom your light and love has shone. Grant that we with them may one day rejoice in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger, and in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.